Want to see a trick? Yeah, the trick is getting that song out of your head for the next few days. What is up, my resin monkeys? Nostalgia. The dictionary defines it as a feeling of longing of times long past. Something that evokes feelings, sensations of times long gone that we wish we could go back to and relive again. While it's a very fuzzy feeling that many of us do experience, I honestly think it's great that we don't have to live through those times anymore. <laughs> Although I can say the same thing for my neighbors up in the north. Um, but that's a depressing story for a totally different time and has no space here today. If this is your first time in my channel, welcome! My name is Leona and people call me the Rhythm Queen. I built and paint anime resin figures and ban those twat waffles that come and dare call them dolls. So don't be a twat waffle and just call them figures, please. As you can see, I have no fucking filter and I don't give a flying monkey's ass if somebody gets offended. So if you are easily offended, uh, this might not be the channel for you. If this is your cup of tea, then stay a while and listen. Chobits. Chobits turns 20 this year, and while I'm pretty sure that one third of my audience was still in diapers back then and didn't actually have a chance to watch it, the other part of my audience will fondly remember this anime as being their first ever that they watched. Now to me, it, it does kind of evoke like a nostalgic feeling because back then I, I was downloading it from Kazaa and LimeWire and I uh, lucked out because I didn't get any goddamn viruses that, you know, screwed up my PC back then. Back in the day, fan subs were doing the Lord's work and bringing really rare and never before seen anime to the Western audience. Now, this series does evoke in me some nostalgic feelings, not gonna lie, but in a different way that many of you might think it does. It's like a little time capsule for me particularly because it makes me remember things that I lived through that time when I was watching the series. And what better way to honor this very, very beloved series than painting a very, very small chi. I have been asked why I don't paint miniatures or people suggest I paint miniatures. And the answer to that suggestion or question is that Hell no! Like, this is the smallest scale I'm willing to work with. Smaller than this, I have no time for that. I have no patience for that. I honestly don't know why people like painting miniatures. It's not something that appeals to me, but hey, air to each their own. And uh, yeah, stop fucking asking. It's not gonna happen. Ever. Now, this was the original GK that came out way before the PVC or the pre-painted figure of her sitting on this lamppost came out. Made by completely different companies, different sculptors, and obviously different scales because she is probably a 1 of 10 scale and the other one was, I don't know what the scale was for the other one, I never bought the pre-painted version because I don't buy pre-painted figures. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you will still enjoy watching me paint this lovely little lady. And uh, yeah, I plan on releasing two more Chobit special videos, like it's going to be a mini series. So be sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button, making sure to activate all your notifications so that you'll see when my next video comes out. As always, we get to do some rub-a-dub-dub -dub to our kit. It's very important to always clean before you do anything to it. Um, although I have seen some people pin and sand the kit before cleaning, and I don't know how that works for them, but I'm always doing this first for good measure. Clean and scrub so that we remove any mold release left from the actual mold. That's a type of grease, and if you don't clean it thoroughly, your paint will not adhere to the surface. Oh, 
All right, so this kid is extremely small. She's probably around a one ten scale, and when you have this small of a kit, it comes with its own sets of challenges, particularly trying to get all the parts pinned due to how small the area you have to actually insert and install the metal pins. And not only that, but also trying to get the details to look good and be appreciated, even though they're pretty minuscule. For the street light that she's sitting on, the kit did come with a large brass rod so that it can work as the body of the lamp. So I'll be drilling straight through the base to stick it in there. what I mean by the kit having details even though they're pretty small. Just look at how beautifully sculpted the hands are. It's pretty hard to focus on the camera so that you can see it, but hey, it's there and I love it. While the kit is kind of recent, the way the parts were keyed were not that great. The top of the lamp where she sits on has a large peg, but it doesn't really go all the way into her butt. Uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't take that out of context. Get your freaking mind out of the gutter. Sure, we all know Hideki had to pu pu push a button in her special place just to turn her on. We're talking about sticking something up her butt so that she can be stable. Yeah, th that comes out way worse than I thought it would. So we need to drill that area out and then fill it in to get a snug connection. Very small parts require very small pins. I'm bringing out my fine brass wires to do the job for that. And here you can really appreciate the huge gap between the bangs and the hair that will need lots of putty to close up. Her side bangs didn't have any connection keys. And for situations like these, I just drill directly into her face since the hair will cover the area and the pins will remain hidden. Now, halfway through the pinning process, I decided that I wanted the lamp to be functional. And that meant that I needed to separate the light bulb from the socket, make it hollow and insert an LED light into it. Doing this was ext extremely difficult because the resin does heat up when you drill through it. And it's also fucking tiny. And I lost it a good three times before I was done modding it.
For the LED, I thought I'd use this modular light that I could insert into the tip for the effect. To turn it on, you just press it in and it's supposed to last a good 10 hours before the battery goes dead, which I don't really mind. This girl does have a lot of trouble areas with gaps and I'm just gonna do the thing I do with putty, which is uh, fill the shit everywhere. And to those that always ask, no, I'm not gonna dignify your lazy asses with answers. Go down into the description and read. Goddamn you, read. <laughs> Again, the hands on this kit are tiny, but they're pretty sick. But there are other things that I wish the sculptor could have done better, but I'll reserve my comments for later. Sanding her did take a shit lot of time. You'd think that it'd be easy being that she's so small, but it makes harder to reach really, really tiny and tight areas. And it also becomes really hard to avoid sanding off details like the ribbons on her dress covering her back, her arm and her legs. So when the details started to fade because of all the sanding, I brought out my scriber and defined those details again to not lose them. Now, when I partially assembled her arms to the torso, I realized that her right arm wasn't really connecting fully, even though the putty work was done correctly. After a bit, I noticed that the arm needed a little bit of heat bending so that when the hand touches her leg, it will actually connect to her shoulder without it popping out and staying in place. It, it's an easy fix. It's just, just, 
there's no science to it. You just need to have a good eye for this and think fast for repairs or for any modifications that you might need to do. And this is something that I will regret doing later. I should have connected both legs before attempting to correct her sitting pose on the peg. This will come and bite me in the ass later. Yes, pun intended, because the leg I didn't connect should have rested on the actual light. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about later. But I will say this now, do as I say, not as I do. Learn from my fucking mistakes and do things right. Now here's a neat little trick to having your material shelf. This is a gauzy gloss liquid. It basically removes any fogginess from clear resin and it makes it crystal clear. Again, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. She did require a shit ton of time and effort to sand and correct almost all of her parts. Some seam lines were uneven and I had to putty them so that I can sand and level the area. Also, the kid came with three broken hair strands and I was able to find two, but the third one, the third one disappeared into the void and went MIA. So I had to redo it myself and re-sculpt it manually with some putty. Now the lamp itself was a brain fucker because I was thinking of pinning it to be able to remove the top and turn the light inside on, you know, by pressing it. But I, I could not get the pins at an angle to work for me due to how thin they were. And I was about to scrap this idea entirely because of it. But then I remembered that I had a brass pipe that I could use instead with some fairy lights that could go inside the tube and into the lamp. And 
I could just leave it glued and shut permanently while the lamp can turn on and off with the battery pack. So that's what I decided to do at the very end. Doing this for many years has taught me to be very resourceful. If you don't actually get the results or you don't think you're gonna get the results with an original idea, you can always go back and bring out or make more ideas that could better work for the project that you're doing, which is something that I did here. I really wanted to use that modular LED little light, but at the end of the day, it wasn't gonna be possible because of how the actual lamp was designed. So yeah, had to go with this other idea instead. And finally, just fine sand and polish those patched up pinholes that I left behind from earlier. Priming was straightforward. I just used white for the figure, but gray for the base parts. Primer lets you see any imperfections left behind in the prep stage that you weren't really able to catch. So round two of sanding is up in this step. I've gotten asked if I don't hand sand anymore thanks to all the tools and little toys that I have for that. But while they do help with the grunt of the work, I still go in by hand at the end and really polish those details to get, you know, a feel for them, literally. And lastly, I am just going to re-sculpt this part of the socket for the light so that it can be glued to the bulb later. Now the fun part begins. It's not that complex. I'm just going to paint the hair and leave the dress white for later. I'm using Mr. Javi Lashiva's orange for the skin. And while she is blonde, I don't want to paint her hair yellow. I want it to be more brownish like in the anime. So I will be using the same color I used for my Gothka figure from the Christmas special last year.
and so that I won't have to paint the sockets later. This time I remembered to mask them before I painted the skin tone on. Now I didn't want to shade the ribbon areas on her legs with the airbrush because I'm going to do it with pastels later. She's so small and I feel that shading with the airbrush will just saturate the whole area and it's not something I really want, it's something I want to avoid. So I want more control and that's where pastels will come in. Pastel shadings bring those tiny details to the surface in a way that an airbrush sometimes can't. So we're bringing out our best pastel game into this tiny girl. So dab, dab, dab to make your chi fab.
And while the dress is white, you can actually have an array of color options to pick and choose to shade it. I always try and avoid using gray though. It makes the white look pretty dirty. So I'm going to be using blue to complement her blue accents on her outfit. I am not a fan of hand brushing. I have always preferred the airbrush, but you need to learn to pick and choose your battles. I reluctantly went with hand brushing this time, but only for the blue parts of her outfit, because honestly, it was going to take way more effort to mask everything, to paint it, only to remove the masking tape and then have to retouch the goddamn thing again. So I will trade a few brush strokes here and there in exchange for less headaches with her blue ribbons. And I didn't just want to leave the dress in a boring white and added some pearl to it to make it pop against her skin and hair texture. And finally, taking a few hours to paint those tiny details on the edges of her ribbon strands and dress. Because of course, why mask when you can hand paint and spend the same amount of hours doing it? <laughs> Thank you.
Once all that was done, I did some quick masking and painted her panties white pearl to match her dress. The eyes are left for last. She was challenging because there have been very, very little times where I've had to paint such small faces. But we'll get it done, like always. I am not a fan of this mouth, that's for sure. This is my only complaint for this kit. Now, the sculptor did an amazing job with her hands, her feet, pretty much everything, except for her goddamn face that turned out kinda derpy. Nonetheless, I'm going to work with what I have and try to make the best of it. I want to take this moment and greatly thank all of my lovely patrons that appear on the screen right now. It's not without their support that I can continue to bring you more content each time. And I also want to personally thank Sugar Miller, Alfina, Noko, Lassifer, Mistaria, K. Elmir, Eggboyd, Mary Cooper, Marin Sunhill, Deimos, Lightning F, Sea Pony Sarah, Aisha Lee, Grim Thanatos, Alexandra Matheny, Fiore Lili, Euphemism, Sage Rosado, Dimitria Townsend, Mandy Gordon, SK Lamfer, Meg Scrabble, James McCreary, Rainy B, Maverick 107, Megan Duffy, Kiki, Nikki, Pickle Salty, Fake It Till You Make It Mom, Blah, It's Me, Katsy, I Muse, Chasse Delani, Evelyn Cole, Amagon Rush, and Laura Chan. Thank you so much. I always appreciate all the support you guys give me and it fuels me to continue to make more for you guys. And lastly, I didn't want her bangs in her hair to have that separation line. Hence, I will go ahead and fuse them to make them look like a single piece. I've already done this in the past and did a tutorial on it, so if you're interested in learning the technique, check that out in a previous video I did of Oscar Langley. Before we continue, I want to point out that T's base is actually a temporary base. It's not the final one she'll have because since I'm doing three figures of Chobits, I am actually going to be doing a special base for the three of them. But the base process will be left for the last video. I also want to mention that these kits were worked on in my Twitch live streams. In yes, one of my live streams was in English and the other one was in Spanish. So this video is in English right now as are the rest of my videos on my channel. But Sumomo was actually worked on on my Spanish live stream. So the next video will be in Spanish. <laughs> yes, you heard that. My first ever Spanish video. But don't worry, it will be hard sub for you guys so that you won't miss a beat on all the action that's going on. I've been asked in the past why I don't do Spanish videos. And the simple answer to that is that, um, yeah, my channel was originally going to be a Spanish channel, but nobody freaking cared. So I decided to do my content in English. And nobody is to blame for that, but you, you, you're to blame for that because you didn't care. 
And if you didn't care then, I hope you care now because it will depend entirely on you. Yes, you, my Spanish speaking audience, to determine whether it's going to be the first and maybe not the last video in Spanish. Because if I actually do it and it doesn't have good reception, that will probably be the first and last video in Spanish that you'll see here on my channel. So I hope you actually stay and watch it. It's gonna be like a little cultural exchange video between me and you guys and everybody else that watches my videos. So I hope it will be fun, even though it's going to be in a different language. It's still me. I'm still gonna say and, and do stupid shit. So yeah, <laughs> just in a different language, that's it. Thank you so much for watching guys. And if you enjoyed what you've been witnessing up until now, be sure to share, obviously, this video with your friends. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would get a nostalgic punch with, uh, yeah, this little video showing some love to a very, very old series. Also, be sure to leave a comment for the algorithm god so that we can continue to get a little bit more exposure of this channel and try and get to that coveted 100K milestone because we are getting close to that. And I, I still can't believe it, but hey, Help me get there faster. And as always, uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Somehow, we'll figure it out.